We're all capable of becoming our Jungian shadows. All of us have a monster within us. The shadow is basically comprised of repressed desires and barbaric impulses, morally inferior considerations, puerile fantasies and resentments, etc. It's all those things about yourself that you don't want the world to know about. Carl Jung has said on the subject, the shadow is merely somewhat inferior, primitive, unadapted, and awkward, not wholly bad. It even contains childish or primitive qualities which would in a way vitalize and embellish human existence, but convention forbids. Carl also said, it is a therapeutic necessity, indeed, the first requisite of any thorough psychological method, for consciousness to confront its shadow. In the end this must lead to some kind of union. At any given moment each of us can give in to the hidden or unconscious aspects of ourselves, both functional and dysfunctional, which the ego has either repressed or never recognized. Instead of not allowing the hidden aspects of ourselves to creep out, we can integrate them. For example, if you are an agreeable pushover who never stands up for him or herself, you can integrate a shadow aspect of yourself so you can set boundaries in healthy ways. Professor Peterson has stated that we need to get in touch with our inner monster and utilize it in proper ways to become complete. As Jordan has professed, shadow integration is an idea he gleaned from reading Carl Jung's work. Jung wrote, it is a frightening thought that man also has a shadow side to him, consisting not just of little weaknesses and foibles, but of a positively demonic dynamism. Carl Jung said, modern man is sick because he is not whole. On another occasion, Carl wrote, wholeness is not achieved by cutting off a portion of one's being, but by integration of the contraries. Jung also said, the most terrifying thing is to accept oneself completely. You have to be brave to integrate your shadow. Jordan Peterson has stated that for some, assertiveness training is a way to integrate their shadow. This is standing up for your better self. It's extremely difficult for highly sensitive individuals to assimilate their shadow self because when they do they feel cruel, mean, or like a morally reprehensible person. They'd often rather say nothing than risk the chance of being a meanie. Cause they believe mean people suck. Conversely, for aggressive, masculine individuals, allowing yourself to be soft and vulnerable, is shadow integration. They have to allow their feminine side to be utilized without feeling humiliated and looked down upon. Shadow integration is inhibited by the persona. The word persona was utilized in Roman times to refer to a mask worn by an actor in a theatrical production. In Jungian psychology, the persona is the social mask that we all figuratively wear to hide our true selves. Specifically, these personas are the various ways we present ourselves in distorted ways to the world. For example, in mixed company we may pretend that we are wealthier than we really are to make the group believe we belong. Shadow assimilation brings about individuation of the individual. Carl Jung has stated, the aim of individuation, equated with the extension of consciousness and the development of personality, is to divest the self of its false wrappings of the persona, the mask the personality uses to confront the world, and the suggestive power of numinous unconscious contents. Jungian psychoanalyst James Hollis has stated on the subject, the goal of individuation is wholeness, as much as we can accomplish, not the triumph of the ego. Jung also stated, individuation is an expression of that biological process, simple or complicated as the case may be, by which every living thing becomes what it was destined to become from the beginning. Jung provides us all with a warning, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and you will call it fate. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own souls. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. We can't avoid necessary conflict and expect to become a fully functional individual. We are at the mercy of the aspects of our shadow self that we refuse to acknowledge and integrate. Professor Peterson says to consult your resentment. It's a revelatory emotion. Resentment always means one of two things. Either the resentful person is immature, in which case he or she should shut up, quit whining, and get on with it. Or is being taken advantage of, or allowing yourself to be taken advantage of. No matter which resentment you are experiencing, as Carl Jung stated that in each of us there is another whom we do not know. Knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darknesses of other people. What you resist, persists. Best-selling author and yogi, Michael Singer, corroborates this idea with his quote, If you are resisting something, you are feeding it. Any energy you fight, you are feeding. If you are pushing something away, you are inviting it to stay. 
Unless we are consciously aware of our shadow and make a concerted effort to integrate it, we often project it onto others and remain incomplete as a person. Individuation is impossible without integrating all parts of ourselves. Even though we so want to give it to someone else and act like it's not part of us, we need to accept it, no matter how much we dislike it. The only way to wholeness is to repurpose the shadow inside of ourselves to help the world. We are meant to utilize our hidden emotions, feelings, and passions to bring about goodness. We can't hide from our individual shadows for all of our lives without consequences. Repression isn't the answer to the shadow problem, and using your shadow self to hurt people isn't the answer either. Escaping from your shadow in a healthy way is impossible, so you might as well do some proper shadow integration.